the Olympus uh, XA is the first of a series of compact 35 millimeter cameras. Um, a very popular camera. Uh, there's also the XA1 to XA4. Um, the XA is the only one which is a, a real rangefinder. The other ones have either fixed focus or uh, just the indication uh, of the focusing distance. Um, this is uh, this lens is a 35 millimeter f 2.8 lens, um, and yeah, the camera was uh, made between 1979 to 1985. Um, it was designed by uh, Yoshihisa Maitani, uh, this legendary legendary designer who also created the Pan, the OM, the IS, and and also the Mu uh, camera. I will talk about it in another review. Uh, and yeah, great interface. Uh, very practical. You've got the focus throw below um, this uh, lever for aperture because it's an aperture priority uh, camera with access to flash if you have the flash module. Um, the slider door is really great for turning it on and off. You you have basically the re the winding button uh, button uh, lever here uh, and the shutter button is here. Uh, tactile, sometimes a bit touchy. That's maybe the only negative side, but it works. Um, underneath you have um, this switch that enables uh, basically a battery check um, uh, for yep, a small beep. Uh, you do have self-timer uh, and you have also a, a backlight compensation of 1.5 uh, available here. Um, also the battery uh, uh, compartments here, um, the film release uh, compartment a compartment button is here and yeah not much else to say about this uh, camera you have the the flash connectivity here i will talk about it a little later and yeah the the rewind knob here so let's go see a few of the examples uh, from my tests uh, the two first images that's with uh, vision 3 kodak vision 3 um, cine film basically film made for uh, movie making that has been rolled into small 135 uh, cartridges. Um, very precise film um, and a good way to start the test. Uh, as we can see on the left picture, the bokeh is interesting. It's a soft and precise bokeh, uh, not too creamy. Uh, the geometry is great. Uh, the color rendering, same thing. And more importantly, I think in those two images, we can see that uh, the exposition is really... Uh, well contained by the camera. Uh, the picture on the right, uh, uh, we definitely can see that uh, the respect uh, of lines, of vertical and horizontal lines, uh, is great with this lens. Really great little lens, and yeah, the camera really looks like it's. It, it does pack uh, uh, lots of power uh, in it in this small package. Again, two pictures with Vision Three. Um, even if the rangefinder is small, um, it's pretty easy to do the focus where you want the two zones that uh, superimpose themselves uh, to give you the, the indication of what plane is in focus. It works well, um, even without glasses. When you have, when you need corrective glasses, like I do, I have a slow, small myopia, so probably for a harder. If you have a stronger uh, default, it will be hard. But even so, it's really comfortable to use. Um, Exposition um, is great on the right, even if it's really contrasty and very highly lit. Um, here on the left, it's still Vision 3, um, just to show that exposition is, is still good in more diffuse uh, lighting uh, conditions. And again, focus. Um, the rangefinder is really comfortable, even so it's really small, but it's perfectly comfortable. Um, on the right, that's a Cine Still Film 800T, basically Vision 3 film without the Remjet layer behind. So it's got really some weird specifics. Uh, what's interesting is the camera's is maximum uh, ISO setting is 800. So at least you can use those uh, uh, those new films um, and those more sensitive films. And it's really good at measuring uh, exposure. So uh, here again, two examples with Cine Still Film 800T. Um, the picture on the left was just a good example, I think, first, that exposure measurement is, is really good. And two, because the camera is really small, even so it's a rangefinder and you don't exactly see the same point of view as the lens itself, it's very close. So you're, uh, 
you basically have a good, uh, you can really frame your, your image well uh, without too much. Uh, uh, I obviously didn't take 50 pictures. I only took one and the framing was right. And that's a good example in my opinion. Uh, on the right, that's uh, an example also of how exposure measurement is really good. Even so, there's a very high contrast uh, situation uh, with this light, which is really f fine. Um, obviously, it will depend on the characteristics of the film too to resist high lights and low lights. But basically, this camera is going to serve the characteristics of the film. Um, that way, it's really a great camera. Uh, same thing here, Cine Still 800T. Uh, daylight on the left, um, basically sunset on the right, uh, with the very specific glowing characteristics of that film. Um, yeah, it's a camera that's going to really serve the film you put inside. So that makes it really interesting. Super portable, very precise, very reliable in that sense. Again here, uh, two examples with film, but that's Gold 200, Kodak Gold 200. And the image on the left, just to show that it's got a relatively good flare control. There is some image transformation, obviously, but exposure, again, is, is good. Um, and then it's not that disturbing, uh, at least in my opinion. It works pretty well. And on the right, they're really, again, one of those examples where geometry and exposure seems just pinpoint uh, spot on. Um, here are two more color photographs. Those two are, are interesting. They're with Cine Still 400 film, a new emulsion from Cine Still. Um, but it gives a good idea of street photography with the soft, soft bokeh, not too creamy, um, a really precise uh, focus uh, with this range finders that I really find comfortable. Uh, again, on the picture on the right, uh, as you can see, I, I could really pinpoint the focus on the image in the mirror. And it's it's comfortable to use and 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 yeah, the camera really respects uh, the lens as a color rendering, which is really great. Um, and really, you will get the character of your film, and the camera won't put that much um, of its characteristics into it. And we can see that with those two black and white pictures. That's um, Silbera U two hundred film. Again, quite flawless camera. Ex exposure is good. Um, for those who know the film, you, you really get uh, the character of the film coming out. Um, here are two pictures. I don't remember what film I used on the left. Maybe Ferrania, I'm not sure. But I like those two pictures uh, next to each other because it really, to me, gives a good idea of what I meant by the camera respecting the characteristics of the film. Uh, on the right, that's Cine Still XX um, film, basically black and white Cine film, uh, set at 100 ISO. Um, you get this modern look, uh, while on the left picture you, you get this old school look. Um, again, exposure is perfect, and and yeah, it's a, it's a really a workhorse in that sense. Really compact and and precise. And here again, two uh, pictures taken with Kono Monolith 400 film. Um, on the left, it just gives you an idea also how how well it restitutes uh, the film's characteristics. Uh, the yeah will only slightly add its own character, obviously because it has it still has a lens, um, and but it also manages very well low speeds, uh, a slow speeds, um, and you will need to have the camera is really small, so it's going to be hard to keep steady with your camera in, at really low speeds, but just to give you an example on the right, I kind of like this picture, but. It's not very stable, but the exposure was was right. Uh, even in, in it's it's really good at measuring exposures, even in very slow speeds. So this camera has basically, if you want to use flash, it, it has a system of flash modules that you you screw on. Um, there's four different modules. Uh, basically, you have the that's a, the strongest one. Um, that's the, the guide number is uh, A16 is the 16 of guide number, but you also have the A11. Uh, there's two other um, modules, which is the A1L, I believe, and A9M, which were meant for uh, other models of this camera, but I think they adapt. I, I don't have them, so I haven't tried them. But um, yeah, let's let's put one on. Basically, you put it on and you screw it. That's the A16 is screwed this way. Um, very practical. The flashes, uh, the batteries are AAA batteries. So uh, here, that's A11. It's a little bit more compact, but you screw on on the side here. 
So overall, a really great camera. Um, I didn't talk about uh, ISO settings. It's just underneath uh, the lens here. And you have uh, ISO uh, settings also on the flash, on the flash module. So really, really great camera. Um, when you turn it on, basically, here it goes, truck turns the flash on, uh, supposedly. Uh, this one has no batteries, so yeah. But yeah, um, it's a really compact, solid feeling, precise camera. Um, great for basically anything if you're into ranch, ranch finders. Um, with the flash, the flash actually works pretty well as we've seen. Um, I guess it's got its limitation for the size, but overall a classic. <laughs> <laughs>